Welcome to this week's painting update. Um, eight new miniatures this week and a whole bunch of rescued ones from the drawers of shame that have been rebased. Going to start with the new stuff then. Um, right at the front, let's get this out of the way. There's a um, there's a Hovel's fruit barrel, uh, which I found in an old box and painted up to go with the set I did earlier in the year. So that'll get added to general scatter. Next up, go from left to right, there's a Reaper Bones Roper. Um, bones black? Yes, bones black, not a not a oh, standard bones. Um, lovely figure, lots of animation, separate tentacles, they plug in. Um, he's light, just throw him around. There he is. Quite big, quite ferocious. I like him a lot. All right, so uh, then uh, another Reaper miniature, metal this time. Uh, a dancing girl, she's... She's not called a dancing girl, she's called something else. Anyway, she was... Sorry. There we go. She was half painted on my painting table for, oh, I don't know, a year and a half, two years. So um, so she got finished this time round. Happy with her. Next up, this is a standard bones. This is the overloaded adventurer. Whoop, lots of stuff on his back. Does that work? Yeah. Um, easy enough to paint. Just lots of colour changes. Uh, next up, right, another one that's been sitting around for years is uh, a Reaper Bones Valkyrie. Uh, I've given her a wire spear because she was holding a sword and it really annoys me that she's got a sword in her scabbard and um, she was holding another one. That just bugged me. The metal one doesn't. How, now, what's she doing? She's either not having not holding a sword or doesn't have a sword in a scabbard. Anyway, the bones one for some reason did, but they're really easy to drill a hand out. Um, might give her a flag. Might not. But she's um, she's ended up being a little more brightly coloured than I wanted to as well. But there we go. Right, now this one, this is a metal reaper. Um, this woman is... Uh, she's a going to be a recurring uh, villain in my... Um, Clockwork and Chivalry campaign that I'm running. So um, she's on those annoying characters that the player characters catch up with and she always escapes, which I find thoroughly tedious in a role-playing game. But we're doing a written scenario and that's what they want. So, Right, then we've got an Elven Archer, um, another Reaper metal miniature. There we go. Um, so she's a, I don't know, what, she's an updated version of an old D&D character I had way back in the early 80s, uh, which is why she's got blue hair. Um, so I won't use her as that character because I don't play D&D and I don't have the stats or the sheet or anything, but I can use her name and her general abilities if I need to need to put her into a game. And lastly for the new ones is this um, Dwarf on a Pony. This is a normal Bones miniature. Um, quite low detail. The pony doesn't have feet, hooves, just has, I don't know, blends into the ground. But it's not that bad. bad. Um, he's got character. It reminds me of um, Little Knight on the Dog in Labyrinth for some reason. Anyway, Thought I might call him the Red Dwarf. And his pony can be called Crichton or something. How's that? So, um, a sort of non-threatening NPC. So, uh, so that's the new stuff for this week. Right, on to the old stuff. Um, I don't actually know where all these miniatures originated. But we'll go through them and, and see what I can remember. Um... Again, none of these have been repainted. They're all just been prized off their old bases and stuck onto new ones. Um, I'm going to start on the right this time. This guy here, he's 
one of the a range of figures I produced in the 90s, which you can't get anymore. Um, there are a couple in an earlier video, and these are the only ones surviving from a range of about 10 miniatures, I think. So he's, um, uh, I don't know, swordsman, cultist. Quite a useful little figure. Um, so yeah, last of a dying breed. Next up, Gandalf. Gandalf from Heritage. His staff has broken so many times. One of the first figures I bought. Tiny figure, no good today. Um, don't know what that is. Uh, but there he is, he's Gandalf, so he gets to stay. To go along with Gandalf, we've got Gollum. I painted Gollum black all those years ago. So these miniatures were based on the Ralph Bakshi, Bakshi uh, animated Lord of the Rings films. I did have the full Fellowship of the Ring and they were all originally painted in um, enamels um, and they've all gone, except for Gollum and Gandalf. So um, I'm keeping them just because they're so old and lovely. Moving down the row, uh, this is a Ral Partha rogue, thief, I think thief, when, uh, painted by Simon Webb, um, and then of course he decided he didn't want it, so I got it. Um, useful character figure, wonderful paint job. Next up is Sparky. Sparky is a, come here Sparky. Magic the Gathering miniature. Um, and I can't remember what card he's from. But um, he's a little fire dragon and he's got little black hair there. So he was a character in my Ars Magica campaign. Next up is... Ah, uh, God. I don't know. Painted by Simon again. Um, I think this is a Planescape miniature. Very useful to be a wise man storyteller um, but yeah I'm pretty sure he's a Planescape miniature this one I do know this is another magic the gathering miniature this is um, like the librarian from the library of Leng uh, always happy to have people reading books uh, and then at the end this is a Essex miniature Essex Frankenstein's monster Painted by me way back in, uh, what, 90, 92, 93, 91, somewhere around there. Classic monster. Worth hanging on to. Right, okay, now we're, now we're entering unknown waters. These three guys here, this one, this one, there's this one. They're a set. I don't know who made them. They're tabbed miniatures. They should go on slaughter bases. Um, there's the sort of fish guy, there's a uh, stone guy, and there's uh, a well, sort of tree forest guy. Um, they're nice representations of like nature spirits, but I, I have no idea. They're, um, they're lead free pewter, but I say no idea where they came from, but put them over this side because that size getting a bit full all right all right now now i know where it is. these three these are ralpatha angels um they also did some fairly wonky flying angels but these are they're they're nice enough figures they're quite well they're old but I like them. I think they're decent. They're decent little angel figures. Um, they featured in my Ars Magica campaign. Uh, this one is Gabriel. This one's Raphael. Can't remember who this one was. Uh, okay, so three Ralpatha angels. Not that side. Uh, while we're on the subject of angels, here's a Rafa miniature. Um, he was converted to be Uriel. Um, added uh, added the bird. 
I think I added the bird. Do you know what? I might not have done in this case. He might have come with the bird. He might actually be... Yeah, no, he comes with the bird. He's a druid. Um, I gave him the wings. The wings are from a citadel angel of death from way back in the fiend factory range. Um, so yes, I'm sorry. He comes with the bird, but I gave him the wings. Nice figure. Uh, okay, this one, I think Grenadier, painted by Simon Webb again. This was his druid character in a really, really awful second edition D&D game we both played in. Um, beautifully painted, of course. Um, flat, sort of two-dimensional sculpt to fit with the with the um, the moulding of the time, uh, but nonetheless, nice nice figure. Uh, right, ghosts. Hey, hey. <sighs> Citadel ghost. Citadel ghost. Archive ghost. Which one is the scariest? This is nice. This is a Perry's sculpt. Um, Elizabethan bloke, head under his arm. Classic ghost. Fantastic. Love him. Um, what was he in? Night Horrors. That was the range, wasn't it? This one, bigger. The um, the white's gone really mucky on this guy. Uh, bigger ghost, more motley. Lovely figure, though. Um, I, did, I was thinking of redoing the white because... It's got so mucky, but it actually makes him look a bit sort of um, grave-worn. So I'm going to keep him as he is. And then this one, this scary guy, this is from Archive Miniatures. Um, I don't have any of my Archive Miniatures left, mainly because they're all a bit rubbish. But he's just too good. And I do have a Scooby-Doo set of miniatures, so they can hunt him down at one point. Right, nearly that. I'm going to go to this guy next. The Devil. This, this is a minifigs value of the four winds. Devil. Excellent, excellent miniature, I think. Classic. Just works for any sort of witchcraft thing or uh, looks like something straight out of a hammer film. He's heavy, being fully metal. One of my earliest miniatures. Um, I mean, the sculpting's pretty awful, but you can't really go wrong with this. Um, but yeah, the folds in that cloak, not, not good. Anyway, the devil, just great miniature. Uh, all right, Grenadier, I'm just move all three of them. Come on, you can have. All right. Grenadier Gargoyle. Um, came in a set, I think, with a Sphinx. Might be wrong, but there we go. If I need a Gargoyle, got a Gargoyle. Old Games Workshop Citadel Fiend Factory. Oh, excuse me. What? What is this? I, I blobby bloated demon thing. Just too old to get rid of. Uh, and lastly, um, Alternative Armies Tree Man, I think. Might be black tree design. It's not, is it? It's alternative armies. Nice, nice figure. Solid. Separate arms on this one. Um, quite menacing. Chunky tree man. Okay, that's it. That's everything. Back to the bear workstation. Um, got an awful lot more to um, prise off their bases and and redo. So there'll be more of these in the future. Um, as always. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.